can you get back the time that you've lost or do you find yourself speeding up things a little bit at this time either trying to get to where you would have been normally um i don't know anymore um be honest with you um we've been we've been at it for so long since the end of july early august that um uh, we've practiced too much. We've had way too much time on the court without any games. Um, so I don't know that there's any more time that you could spend on the floor to be any more ready uh, to play that way. I think the um, the time has passed when you could, when you would say, well, if we had more practice, we would be, we would be better. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think the, um, the physical part is what it is. I don't think we're going to be able to get any more out of it now until we start playing games. I think the mental part is what's the worst part about it right now. I don't know where anybody is mentally, not just our team. I mean, any team, you know, I can't imagine that anybody mentally, you know, any coach is sitting out there saying my, my team's in a great place mentally. I, I just can't imagine that. Not, not, not from what I see every day here at practice and what I see, you know, when I watch some games on TV. Thank you. You know, it's Daniel Connolly from the UConn blog. So since you haven't had any exhibition games and it's been a broken up preseason with a lot of practice, what are you looking for your team in just the first game action that you've had this year? the same thing you would be looking for during a, during your very first preseason game. How does everybody look when we're playing somebody other than ourselves, when there's referees, when the score means something, um, you know, when you're subbing people in and out, um, you know, that's basically, you know, my expectations are not very high. Let's put it that way. You know, like my expectations going into a preseason exhibition game would not be very high. And that's where I am right now. Hi, Gina. This is Charlotte Carroll from The Athletic. To follow up on what you were saying about the mental aspect of how the players are doing, how are, what have you seen from them over, I guess, the last couple of weeks and then this week heading into to gameplay on that side of things? Uh, um, you, you see some signs that, um, you know, that they're okay, you know, and that things are okay. And you see lots of signs that things are not okay, that they're not there mentally. They're somewhere else. The, the ability to focus and concentrate on the task at hand has been very, very, very difficult. Maybe all the interruptions, maybe all the uncertainty, maybe being cooped up, you know, for all these weeks and months. Um, you know, they talk about cabin fever, you know, that people have, I, I, I just gotta, I gotta believe that college basketball, college sports, these kids are all suffering from COVID fever. They don't actually have the virus, but they've got all the things that the virus does to people. And right now, I don't see the, the, the ability to focus and concentrate. Maybe we just need a game. Maybe I'll change my mind after Saturday. But right now, it, 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 it looks, I mean, I know it's a weird year and I know it's difficult for everybody, but nothing about this looks good, to be honest with you. So, you know, is it similar for you and your staff? An, an ability to focus as you ordinarily would in the lead up to a first game, given the, just the crazy nature of these past few weeks, past few months, obviously. Uh, and how you teach, how you approach, how you communicate, anything, anything like that. Yeah, that's been, that's been difficult. Um, and what is it, you know, is it, well, you have seven new bodies in the gym. So that in itself makes it, challenging but that's part of coaching um you know six of them are freshmen that's part of coaching you know what are you going to do um 
The part that's more worrisome is how long it takes to accomplish things. And again, some of that might be just youth and the other part might just be um, the, the inability to, to focus and lock in on, we have to be able to do these three things, let's say. And two days from now, three days from now, we could look like we haven't done any of them ever after spending three days on them, let's say. So that's been a real challenging and real different than what I'm norm normally used to seeing from, you know, what you would call preseason practices. Um, and that's, um, you know, and the coaching staff, uh, you're, you're frustrated because you can't, you can't keep moving forward. So you're actually even doing things like you're doing the next thing. It's like teaching, uh, you know, probably a math teacher and teaching math. You know, you, you go from two plus two equals four and four plus four equals eight. And <laughs> the kid gets it wrong two out of every five times, but it doesn't matter because tomorrow we're going to do five times five and the kid gets it right once out of every five times, doesn't matter because the next day we're going to do, you know, 15 times 25. So you just keep adding things and you just keep going, even when knowing that they didn't even have the stuff that you were doing that's necessary to be able to do the next thing. That's, that's throwing our, the coaching staff for a loop. I don't know how it is other coaches. Maybe I, I've just forgotten how to teach. I don't know. That could be true too. You know, there's a lot of talk about, you know, people wanted the, the student athletes wanted to play this season because if they didn't have it, then that affect their mental health. Um, now we're seeing when you go about it, when there's postponements, when there's delays, when there's uncertainty, it's still affecting their mental health. Um, is that just, is that just the reality of what we're in right now? Is that it's going to basically suck either way? Is there anything that can be done even institutionally to try and support the, the, the kids more? Or is this just our, our, our environment right now? Um, well, I'm not a mental health expert. So let me say that first. Um, I've consulted some <laughs> recently in my life, but I'm not a mental health expert. But I will say this. Um, I think the mental health of, of college kids today, high school kids today, elementary school kids today, is not good. And sports has nothing to do with it. Because if you try to squeeze sports into this, you say, well, that will help them with their mental health. Um, that's only if they're playing well and they're able to focus and concentrate and play to their abilities. What happens when they can't? And now their mental health gets, gets whacked again because why can't I do the things I normally know I can do? Why am I struggling? Well, you may be struggling because this is not a normal way to live. Cooped up in your room, not being able to go anywhere, do anything, see anybody. That's detrimental to your, to your mental health. Not, not playing sports. If you could do live your life normally and you didn't have sports, then you could say, you know what, if we added sports, I think they would think you know, better about things. They would feel better mentally. But right now, sports isn't helping them feel better. In some ways, sports is making them feel worse because they can't perform at the level they expect to perform at. It's just not possible. And then you add, I've been practicing since September 1st in one way, shape or another, you know, bum, 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 full, some, pods, half pods, whole team, half team, individual. We've been doing something since September 1st. Then you get a, you know, you get a pause. You get games canceled. We have a COVID test tomorrow morning. What if we get a bad re report tomorrow afternoon and no game Saturday? What do you think that does to their mental health? 
I don't know. I don't know. I know we have to try something, but I don't know that anything is working right now from what I can see. Do you think that there should be a pause or is it worth trying to wait until the virus cools off or is that just going to make it even worse? I don't know. I think I'm like the medical people. I don't know. I don't think anybody knows. But I do know that Dave Benedict and I talked long and loud about this, that we were in favor of a February 1st start date. But obviously you're gonna go along with what everybody else wants to do. You're not gonna not do it. But it's, it's shaking out like, this is not, this is not, this is not working. And they're saying that the worst is yet to come. This isn't, this, this isn't working. I mean, we're doing it. Don't get me wrong. And maybe the college football people will tell you, Hey, this is working great for us. I doubt it. But I don't, I don't know. I don't, I hope I keep my fingers crossed every day. And maybe if, if we do play Saturday and after Saturday's game, I'll have a completely different outlook going, boy, that was, that was great. I'm glad we did that. I think, we, you know, I think I see the light there right now. I, I just don't know. Um, you know could, could you uh, just shed more light on, um, I know originally you were supposed to return the eighth, but obviously, um, five days earlier, you're able to get back. Can you just um, shed some light on that decision? You know, what, what went into that to return from uh, the shutdown? What decision was that? To start practice? Yeah, to resume uh, full team workouts. Well, the CDC changed their requirements. Okay. So we were all testing negative and CDC said, you don't have to wait 14 days anymore if everybody takes negative. So we didn't. No, no more complicated than that. All right. <clears throat> uh, Coach Oriam, and this is Michelle Vopel from ESPN. Um, forgive me for asking, with everything going on the pandemic, I know maybe records aren't on the forefront of everybody's mind, but Tara Vanderveer's closing in on tying and possibly passing Pat Summit, um, and you're right behind there. I wonder if you could just talk about what it's taken for coaches like you and Tara both of you have been at your respective programs since 1985 to just continue to find that competitiveness to adjust and also to impact women's basketball far beyond just the college game, the way both of you have done. You know, it's a funny, it, this is a funny um, scenario that happened. Um, but Tara and I did get the job the same year, didn't we? Yeah, 1985. I mean, she was a head coach before then. Obviously, yeah, but she, she okay. was at Ohio State. Yeah. Yeah. And I was an assistant at Virginia. And Nancy Darsh, who we just lost, you know, a great person and a great coach, was assistant coach at Tennessee. And Nancy Darsh was one of the finalists for the Connecticut job. And, you know, one thing led to another, but up, 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 up. I got the job at Connecticut. She got the job at Ohio State replacing Tara Vanderveer. And I remember thinking, man, I wish I could trade places with Nancy. <laughs> I wish I could go to Ohio State and Nancy would be the coach at Connecticut. And, um, and, and it's funny that you look back how long ago that was and that now I'm still here since 1985. Tara's still at Stanford after all this time. And does that have something to do with it? The stability, the being in one place for such a long time, you know, for Pat to be in one place such a long time. Is that how it happens? Is that how you accumulate, you know, those kinds of things? I think that's got something to do with it, you know, and, and I think 
Tara being at a great school, you know, a place that really values uh, women's athletics and women's basketball. And, um, you know, she's the test of time, you know, that's what, that's what ultimately, that's what I think uh, kind of seals your legacy, you know, time, you know, and that's a lot of games to, to coach, much less that's a lot of games to win, you know, um, but I mean, I'm not surprised that she's, you know, that close. I hope she gets a chance to tie it and break the record sooner rather than later. But I'm not, you know, I'm not the least bit surprised, to be honest with you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? You know, can, can you just talk about how Avina has has been through all this? It, you never seem to feel like she's there physically totally, but uh, is she coming along mentally? Is she adding things to the team? Oh, for sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, her situation is probably even more pronounced than anyone else's because um, – it, it's been two years almost since she's played in a game. Um, so for, for E, it's been a long, long road. And then throw in the, the surgery and the recovery from that um, and having to do the rehab, you know, in this COVID environment. A lot of... You know, a lot of obstacles thrown in the way, and I and I think she's done a great job handling it. And she she brings an awful lot to our to our practices, to our team. There's an awful lot of um, you know intangibles that that exist. You know, when he's on the floor, um, and and the the intensity level that she she plays at and how she's, you know, how forceful she is, you know, and in, in her personality also. So I don't know that she's a hundred percent back physically, but, um, you know, it's, it's trending in the right direction. Let's put it that way. Are there any other positives to, to come out of all this practice time, Gino? Everybody's talking about negatives and rightfully, so, but have you seen some encouraging things out of your team? Well, you know, the freshmen are all, are all going to improve, obviously, because everything's new for them. So you look at them two months ago and you look at them today and they've improved, you know, tremendously, um, you know, to the point where when you have them out there in, in a certain certain group with this, you know, with certain lineups, they can really look like they play college basketball. But, you know, if, if we had played four or five games up to this point, I would be able to tell you, you know, definitively, hey, yeah, this is the, this is the progress that these kids have made. But, um, you know, for the freshmen, it's been like that, given where they started. Um, so yeah, there's, there's been a, you know, there's been a, a, a definitive, like, yeah, you can see it. You can see it being able to sustain it on a regular basis, um, has been difficult, but not having any games probably contributes to that because if we had a game, you know, a couple weeks ago or whatever, we would be able to to show them and say, hey, look, this is what this is what happens. You know, this this is how it goes from practice to game. This is how the correlation works. But we haven't had a chance to do that yet. <clears throat> you know, this is Charlotte again. Just kind of sports department in Minneapolis. Um, is there anything Paige does right now 
That might be even better than what you thought. Um, is there anything that she does right now that's better than what I thought? Um, well, I mean, I expect her to be really good. Don't get me wrong. And she's proven that she's, that she's really good. Um, um, but she's, um, she's better. She's better than I thought at saying things that make me scratch my head. Like, I had a conversation with her yesterday, and I said, Paige, you know, on the court, you know, there has to be a, a voice, you know, someone, a voice. I need to, you know, have your voice. She goes, yeah, I know. She goes, but she goes, I talked a lot more today at practice. I go, you did? She said, yes. I said, really? She said, yeah, I heard myself talking. I said, wow, that's pretty cool. The next step is maybe I'll hear you talking. How about we do that? So I was impressed that she thought telling me that she hears herself talking is the same as me hearing her talking. That made me do one of those. I said, that's got to be a Midwestern thing. I was going to say something like, you betcha, something like that, you know? But she's actually a really good basketball player. And she's actually a, lot, a, a little bit better basketball player than I thought she was. And I already thought she was really good. Gina, this is Charlotte again. On the topic of kind of health, is how's everyone else doing physically um, besides Avina? Physically? Uh, mm -hmm. The only one who's had any issues physically um, uh, has been uh, Nika's, uh, she was back at practice today. She went about an hour today. Um, and she's been having some issues uh, in her left foot. But uh, she looked good today. So other than that, um, you know, the normal aches and pains, the normal, you know, sprain this or pull this or, you know, all those things that happen every day, it seems like. Uh, but other than that, Nika's the only one who's missed, you know, a couple of days of practice. That's it. You know, when you, if, you know, everyone's lucky enough to get to Saturday and healthy, the game goes on. Um, what has, I guess, especially the last two weeks, or if you want to go back even further, the last few months taught you about trying to, you know, treasure the things that we probably took for granted before just the fact that you guys could have a season opener you know at all that you could get on the court and maybe just for a few minutes think about basketball uh yeah the the last uh you know when when we when we all heard that November 25th was going to be the starting date. Everybody, everyone was really excited. And, um, you know, everyone was excited about going to practice and, you know, every drill was, um, um, you know, there was a lot of energy. There's a lot of excitement and every little thing became like, wow, you know, this is really fun now. You know, we're going to, we actually know when we're going to play, how we're going to, you know, this is going to be really good. So practices and just everybody's vibe was like really, really good when we heard that November 25th is the starting date. And, you know, I, I think as, as we moved along um, and we started to see you know, whether it was NFL games or college football games start to be, you know, postponed. And there's, there started to be like a little bit of a worry. And now, you know, things became a little more, you know, people became a little more anxious, you know, a little bit, a little bit, you know, 
wanting to, you know, hey, you know, do you think that will happen to us? You know, and we said, look, let's just enjoy what we have today. You know, let's just go out and spend time on the court, you know, do some things. And, uh, but to be honest uh, with you, uh, it, it's been pretty much all consuming this worry about what next to, to, to really truly sit back and enjoy all the things that you, you would think you would want to do that. You know, even Thanksgiving came and went and you didn't get a chance to enjoy that either. So there hasn't been a lot of, you know, things to, to take your mind off of this. Um, and that's why it was so important. It would have been so important for us to have those games because that, that would have given you some emphasis. That's why it's so important that we actually do play Saturday. Because then, you know, as the game is going on Saturday, we can appreciate, yeah, this is what kids like to do. This is what kids came to college to do, you know, play basketball, you know, go to school. Well, they don't go to school. They don't get up, you know, and go to class. They, they take their classes online. So, but, we, but we're getting to play. And so that's something. And that's why, you know, Saturday really needs to happen. And then beyond that, Again, you know, there'll be the worry about the next one, you know, when's the next one. But for now, you know, we really need Saturday to happen for these kids. They really need something to, to give them a little shot, you know, of encouragement. You know, it's Carl Adamek. I was just wondering if you do get through these past, these first five games and say you get to the 22nd and 23rd, are your players going to be able to go home for Christmas and come back? and not be, you know, with each other and then be exposed to their families and everything else? And is that a concern? Uh, yeah. Um, the way it is right now, each state is different, I think, right? So the state of Connecticut, I believe, is still 14 days. Correct me if I'm wrong. That if you were to go out of state and you come in, that's a 14-day quarantine. If I'm not mistaken. So if our players were to go home and none of them live in Connecticut, so if they were to go home and come back, that's a 14 day quarantine. Then maybe, maybe it's, maybe it would be 10. I don't know. But now all of a sudden from the 26th to whenever there would be no game and you, you know, you take a risk that what if something were to happen while they're home? And you're weighing that against, well, how does that make any sense to not, not have them go home for Christmas? But if you ask them, they would say, no, nah, if it means playing, I'd rather stay here. But what if they do stay here and there is no, and there's still no games because something happens? Then how do you feel? So, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's what we should have done in the first place. Just told them to stay home the whole first semester. And we'll start in January. Practice for the whole month of January and play February 1st. But we're past that point now. So short answer to a, I mean, you know, to a long answer is right now, they're not going home for Christmas. Thanks. And that sucks, to be honest with you. But that's life. Mm. Anything else for Coach? You know what makes what makes Paige so likable besides her game? Um, she's a down to earth kid. She's a really great teammate. She has a really good way about her with the other kids on the team. She doesn't take herself too seriously. You know, she doesn't walk around like different than anybody else on the team. She's very humble. You know, she knows she's good, but she doesn't feel the need to go around telling everybody how good she is or acting that way. She's just a, she's a really nice kid who happens to be, you know, really gifted player. 
And when she's on the floor, the, all the players on the floor with her are, are better. So if I could ever get her to, you know, get her hands up on defense a little bit. That would really be be helpful for me. That would make her a nicer kid in my eyes. <laughs> I'd put her hands up on defense. Uh, Coach Ariam, this is Michelle again. I was just wondering if I could ask you really quick about Anna and just with so many freshmen, um, is there almost a little bit more um, on her, even as still a young player, to 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 take on a bigger role, or, or what are you expecting? And I know that's hard <laughs> hard to answer because you haven't played any games yet, but just generally speaking. Yeah, I, Anna's one of those kind of in-between players, you know. Uh, she can she can play um, different spots on the floor and feel comfortable doing it. Um, you know, she, she's an offensive player. You know, she's an offensive player. She, you know, feels comfortable on the offensive end. She feels comfortable shooting the ball. She feels comfortable passing it. You know, she understands the game. You know, she sees things. Um, you know, so when we have her out there with, um, you know, Paige and Kristen and, and E, let's just say, you know, we have – whenever that lineup's on the floor together, that's four guards, but E and, and Anna can play, you know, more than just, you know, have to be here on the floor. Um, so yeah, Anna gives us a little bit different look offensively. It's a challenge defensively, but offensively, um, again, you know, she's a skilled offensive player and she's one of our better shooters for sure. So we really need her. This is not a, I don't, I don't think this is a great shooting team that we had this year. It's not great. You know, it's not, but she can be great at times. And we're going to need her to be really a good shooter a lot. Thank you. Mm -hmm.